be a warrior is not to wear a sword, to wear a gun. To be a warrior is not to be anything but to have the attitude and the mentality of a warrior. The warrior is the courageous one. The warrior is the meaningful one. Let me tell you this. I understand. You tell me about this, please. Tell me about this because i seen this a thousand times. We're in a bar or you're in a party or you're in a baseball game or a football game or a family gathering and somebody comes and does one of these to you and what's wrong with you? <laughs> what is your immediate reaction? You do one of these to me. That goes on a four or five times until one of you really decides that there is something needed to be done and therefore you punch or nothing needs to be done and after a whole bunch of cuss words you all go your own way, you're both a little bit shaken and nothing else has happened. You were not committed. If you were committed, somebody would be bleeding, wouldn't it? So you see, there are second choices. And what I'm telling you is that if you're really gonna be a warrior and you know that you can pick up one of those lances, one of the spears, one of the swords, or even your hands and do one of these to this guy, you know, you understand that you don't need to do it. That's the courageous part. Why? These are rare times and hard times. You do that to the wrong person, that person may be waiting for you. It's something you don't want to face. And I'm not talking guns and knives, I'm talking about with another 10 guys. Mm -hmm. It's a very different age. Yes, you must be ready, but make sure that you're ready for the right circumstances and not for the wrong circumstances. And that goes in everything in life. This, and I, hear, I know you've heard this a thousand times, this is a way of life. It is, believe me, it is. It's a way of life because it's a suit you wear and a soul you keep. Next time, somebody's gonna push you, push. That's it. Push again. That's that fast. Why the pushing back and forth? He takes one, and you say he'll get up. Yes, he will. He perhaps will get up. If he gets up, I'm going to tell you what you do. Come on. That simple. Economy of movement. Make it fast, make it hard, make it once. You know why? All this stuff that you see in this view, all this stuff that you see this, that you see this, all this stuff that you see this, that looks cute here. It's wonderful. But you must put it together. You must put it to flow. And it flows like this when it means something. Come again. Instead of doing that, kick. Do, do. That quick, that simple. Don't waste time. You can be an economist too. I'm an economist. And you know what economics taught me? That you don't need to waste time. That instead of doing all these things, from like, instead of doing all these things, and this, and this, and this, that's an overkill. Again, what? One, you can do, and watch. Two, <laughs> two, two. <laughs> Out, gone, simple. Okay. Now, uh, uh, let's say that um, he's gonna, let's say he's not gonna push you, let's say he grabs you. I know you all seen uh, Van Damme, Bruce. <laughs> now I'm gonna tell you, all that is wonderful for the movies. These ideas of all this grappling means one thing. It means that as long as somebody's holding you, who's in control? You are. He's in control. He's holding you. Never allow anyone to hold you for a second. Never give up control, okay? Never. At this point, the fight, the adversary, things just became very complicated. Mm -hmm. You know why? Now you have to figure out a way how to gain control. So again, so instead of doing one of these, you know, and start fooling around with all this stuff, <laughs> you don't need that. Good break. You don't need any of that. If somebody's attempting to grab you, go with it. Pull. <laughs> go with it. 
economy of movement, you say, yeah, but it's sparring. Let me see you in a party start going like this with somebody. <laughs> you see, that's going to happen in competitions, yeah. in the streets. It's that fast. Yeah. What you need in the street, what you need in real life, like with everything, is the mentality of the world. Keep calm. Grab, pull. Better pull. Boom. It's that simple. Go with it. Don't fight. Let him fight. You move with it. You say, well, all that may sound a bit too much for me. It is not. You know why? Because as long as you're in control, you know what? You know when to harm and who to harm. And then comes a real question. Do you have to harm anybody? Show him a trick or two. Again, let's say he grabs. And then on top of that, he's gonna punch. Again, he's gonna grab. Let's say, and by the way, let's say I'm just standing here and this guy's coming in straight at me. Make it a little, a little bit harder for him. And you say, well, me, ooh, that quick, right? And again, come, that quick, don't let it go. And if you want to want to, come, ooh, straightforward. You don't need a point, you don't need anything else. And if he's coming again, and he's gonna grab either, let's say not grab. Sorry, I got him a little bit. <laughs> let's say that grab. Let's say you're from behind. Go. Strike. <laughs> it's from behind. You're looking. You know. Stay calm. You are in control. As long as you're in control, you know which way you're going. And you say, well, the fancy move. Leave the fancy move for here. Leave the fancy move for your practice. Leave the fancy move for. Um, how can we say, uh, sparring, leave the fancy move, thank you very much, leave the fancy move, or anything else, don't put the fancy move on the screen, stand, fight. This, it's very nice for here, that may get you in trouble in the street, come, anyway, see, here we go. Keep things in a peripheral motion that you know that everything is in front and that you can move forward, attack, sideways, okay, attack, launch, sideways, get out of the way of force, go, go, move, see, without knocking, go, again, move, follow, wherever you go, again, follow, follow, follow. <laughs> intercept, move, how about this, come, <laughs> See? Something different. Whatever you throw fancy, which you shouldn't, you should do fancy simply as a matter of courtesy. You say, what, what do you mean by courtesy? I'm not going to show courtesy to an opponent. Well, that means you're not going to knock him out. You're not going to put this assailant outside of your control until you make what I call a direct attack. What a direct attack. Okay. Attacks is this. Straight, down, short. By the way, notice how I'm using the monkey kick. For those of you who <laughs> like that. Okay. The side, okay. Straight, under, or better yet, right? To the knees, to the back, to the front, or even straight up to the elbow. Why? What, go, what follows the elbow? Your own hand. <laughs> and by the way, use tactics. Use tactics, excuse me. Camouflage yourself. You all know how we do forms. What is all these sounds you hear in the forms, right? Why? You know why? Because if you do this one, it sounded like I hit this guy three times. Uh -huh. He doesn't know what's going on. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you camouflage, and if he's coming, watch this. If you go like this, and you're gonna do that, he may step sideways. Okay, then let me what? If I'm gonna go like this, he comes, comes. Oh, get him out of the other one. Now, if you want to do something like, you know, this and this, uh -huh. and this guy's gonna wait and say, okay, go ahead, continue. 
When you finish with a concert, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm gonna tell you. Short, straight techniques. That's why we emphasize a lot of monkey work. Uh, you have two seafoods here who are excellent in monkey work. I say their work, and it's wonderful. You should encourage yourself according to who you are and what you like to perfect certain techniques that you know will be useful and powerful in the key moments when you want them there. Well, allow me. Watch. Something he doesn't expect. A guy, uh, get out of the stance, just come at me. A guy that is just going to expect something like this. He will never expect that. He will never expect something put in a stand. He will never expect somebody to come and act like a baboon. <laughs> right? Come up, push, up, climb, hit. It's a monkey jump, right? Ooh. <laughs> never expect that. Or somebody that will come in straight, come in straight. Silence. Right? You say what? What? That one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your stances, what do you think they're there? You must integrate the entire system to do this. One thing, I'm gonna tell you. Have a cross in front of you. It is not to crucify you, to put him there. It is to crucify the opponent. The cross divides everything into a line of attack. The first line of attack is the up and the up. The lower line of attack is the down and the up. Forget the legs. When you dominate the upper abdomen and up, the legs follow. And don't forget that, and I hope Gus has been persistent in, in telling you that whenever you do anything, the hands, the foot, the elbows, all are aligned. The entire body is symmetrical. Sometimes you need to be asymmetrical. That means it sometimes has an order, sometimes it does not. And when do you use it? You need to break the order of things. Once again, come attack. Now my hands are down. You're not expecting it. The guy comes. You don't need to hit him hard with the first one. You just need to stop him. So a second one could mean. However, I'm going to tell you. Each single punch, each single kick should have a purpose. If that kick is just to fake him, then do so. But if you're going to do that, come on. Ooh, follow the other one. Another one, come again. Fast. If I were to spar this young gentleman right now, he can probably put some very good punches in my head. Many of you right now, in this instant, can probably. But all I need is one. Just one. What compensates my shape? Yes, my experience. My experience in the technique, in the form. What do you think these forms are for? These forms are, although they're, you hear them often described as what? Ballet-like. Yes, they are. But what they are there is to condition you and envision the real thing for the right time at the right moment. Can you do that? Can I ask you? Are you committed to do that? Can you really do this? Throw out punk here. Can you really do this? Can you really? And notice now, if you would not have a max, this would be one of these. Watch this slowly, please. I mean, see? Mm -hmm. Look at my feet. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what you're taught here? The yep. The impulse. Coming in. Now watch. Coming in straight. Come on. That way. Hard movement in world you're in. You better be careful. This is 1994. There's a lot of ladies out there that can take you guys and jump rope with you. <laughs> <laughs> and they should. You know why I say they should? An opponent has no gender, no sex, no color. The opponent is an adversary. You treat him as one. You always treat him as one. The head is easy to miss, particularly with your high kicks. Uh, if you're gonna do one of these, watch this. If you're, gonna, you're gonna do one of these, it's fast, it's cute, but if this guy is not even shaken by that, uh, you may be singing soprano for a few weeks. <laughs> See? So what are you going to do? Number one is, maintain always a frontal attack. Let him back out. You never back away. Come forward. Seizing. 
Uh, give me his check. It's not a man. Give me a name. Um, also, move linearly. Try to be on a 45 degree <coughs> angle of your opponent all the time or on a straight 90 degree angle of your opponent all the time. Why? Use his force. Don't get tired. Don't use yourself. Use this. Use the adversaries. Use the opponent's force. If he's going to come at you like the front center for the Miami Hurricanes, let him go all the way to Northeast 163rd Street if he wants to. You just get out of the way. Do it again. Come. Come at me. Or, better yet, watch this. Come at me. Come. That's it. See? He's already out of control. Look. Right. It's something that we include all the time in teaching Shen Kuen. It's called Kam Na. Any of you know what that is? It's called the art of ceasing. And there's also Shen Na, which is the art of grappling. Now, I'm going to tell you, that stuff is great if you don't want to kick and punch, and all you want to do is always get the opponent off balance, always hit the opponent, should we say, out of control. Come back. That is a long punch. People in the street don't fight like you. Let's say that this guy doesn't know anything about this, he's just gonna come, come at me. Okay, come at me again. Come at me, okay, come at me again. Ooh. Okay, come at me again. Now look, see, control. You're in control, now what can you do with this? You can punch, you can kick, you can fly, or you can say, have you had enough? <laughs> <laughs> now that's grappling. Ceasing, come now, comes with stopping the opponent with a blow. Come at me with a kick. Okay, see? Out, you're gone. Don't face this guy, don't wait to block and do all this. This is great. So do you want to face his second punch, his second kick? Do you? Now watch this. This is coming up. Come. That's it. He's gone. Now of course, at that moment, he's coming. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> now, punch, kick, whatever, combination. Ceasing. Now, if you want to see it uh, a little bit more fancy, I'll show you something. Come at me. Did you see? Okay. and everything else you want to do with it. <laughs> in our fighting stance, as I'm sure you've seen, in our fighting, move this way so they can see us better, sorry. Uh, in a fight, that's okay, in that, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> in a fighting stance, as you notice, we have the first hand forward right here in front of us. Have you noticed that? Mm -hmm. And the other one is almost right here to the vision. Why is that? Look at my back feet, right? You see that? There is a position here that allows me to spring forward. There's a position here that allows me to move fast. There's a position here that allows me to move from here and punch straight up. Now, is this a block? It's a parry. Why? We don't use blocks. Has he ever told you? Have you noticed that in this system we don't use blocks? And it's not because we're better, not because we're worse, not because it's just because it's the way we do things. We parry things. We continue to use the other man's force. We try to understand that there is an ulterior motive of his attack. What is that motive? To paralyze me. You get me out of the way. Allow me. Come on in. Anywhere you want. And now, the unexpected. Come on. See? He was coming out. Why? Come out again. Ooh. Come up again. Ooh. Okay? The unexpected. You're all over the place. He has no way of doing it. Glass will tell you that we use techniques from the monkey style, particularly something called the drunken monkey. You heard about this. I'm sure you've seen him done. Seen him do a couple. Um, shoot anything. 
Let me tell you why the monkey, the drunken monkey is excellent. We were talking about it the other night. You know why? Have you ever tried to fight with a drunken person? <laughs> this guy's like silk, right? This person, like, you can't go out and hold him. If you, you know, he'll melt in front of you, he'll go down, he <laughs> slithers away. And after all, you have pity. After all, you uh, become, uh, you feel sorry for him, you begin forgetful, and suddenly, you know, he'll give you a sucker punch and knock you out. <laughs> so, why? This is why we have drunken monkey. The monkey stylists, as you know, maintain themselves low and maintain themselves under control. Under control in short, fast punches. Uh, you all know this, this core through punch. Come in. You see that? You went in and out. But in the speed, he went in and out. He didn't have time to move any more forward. Cease the opponent. Uh, I'm, my preference was this, and I passed it on to this gentleman, simply because it makes sense to me. It did. Some of the other more, uh, should we say, strong styles in Shenkun, the long fist, uh, uh, let's say some of the more flamboyant, for me, were expressive and, and they indicated that I had mastered the technique, but that's all they did for me. So inspiring, I never used them. Now, you see a lot of people do this. I, I watch you, some of you spar on, on tape and stuff like that. And you do this, come on. You also do this, come on. That leg. You also do this, come on. You also do this, come on. Why? Standing on the same spot. Why do you do that? Why don't you move forward? Now, are you trying to hold some kind of ground, like Hill, hill 407 in Korea or something? I don't know. Yeah, right? what, why are you standing in the same place? Are you trying to prove that you cannot be moved? Why? Why don't you just move and count? And you say, look, if the guy is seven feet four and he's 340 pounds, I cannot move this guy. Can you really? I wonder if that's true. Can you really? You realize that there's not a human being alive that does not have a soft spot somewhere. Mm -hmm. The point is, well, you know it. Can you do it? What can you do against this guy coming at you at 60 miles per hour, about to clench you into some kind of bear hug? Or about to, or about to sucker punch you? Or about to grab you in some way? Ah, oh, brother. And you're doing one of these. You know, because you don't really want to do anything. You're not really engaged into the action. Come at me. Did I take a stance? <laughs> Did I take a stance? Why does it just come out? Now, I know that you heard to let it out. Be aggressive. Let it out. It's not as much letting it out as act and react before your opponent can happen. So again, I, I'm going to ask you, look, if the guy keeps coming forward, come, keep coming forward, keep coming forward. One will come in. One will come in. For as long as he's coming, you're reacting. <laughs> Don't you understand? But in order to do that, I assure you of one thing. You have to, positively, do it here first, in front of the mirror, in front of your classes, against one another. Because if you gain the mastery of the move between both of you, or two of you, or three of you, that really know what you're doing. Don't you understand that if he did it to you once and he does it to you twice, he may do it three times, but maybe not the fourth time. So he taught you something. She taught you something. You understand? I have dedicated my life to study, quite honestly. And I'm gonna tell you that all of that began right here. That in this very school, I know the school. All of that began with a very young man. His father was in prison in Cuba, a German citizen, and needed a father figure. That father figure 
was filmed by two Chinese men. One, Mr. Fong, and the other one, one, which is still alive in the new fairy town. His name is Mr. Shao, which is Tai Chi. What is that you're seeking? Do you know what you're seeking? And what I'm going to tell you today is that you must begin with the end in mind. When you walk through these doors from that point on, ask yourself, what do I want? Every single day, come in here and say, what do I want out of this? Why am I here? Go just some pay, jump up and down, get a few bruises, go home and say, I've done something well. I don't care what sex you are, how old you are, I don't care what religion you are, where you come from, what languages do you speak, it means nothing. What means is how you're communicating that to yourself. What means is that you have an attitude which is the real attitude of a warrior. The warrior doesn't have to prove anything to anyone. I did not know that at the time. It was a long time before I would learn that. Mr. Shao tried to tell me that many times. This is all for health, not for fighting. Fighting is a secondary purpose of this discipline. If you are to follow this discipline, then you follow it for the mentality of the world. That's what he used to say. You know, it's incredible because when I walked in here last Tuesday, Gus gave me a newspaper of my teacher, Mr. Shao. And the first thing he says, and if you want to read it, it's in the Miami Herald, I believe, and he says, for health and not for fighting. He told me that 20 years ago. What is important is that what you obtain from this training is beyond the years to do the full training. And that will eventually, that will eventually, was my reward. My reward will come when I won trophies like most of you have. My reward came when I knocked out a couple of the students. That I got. My reward came also when we fought out in the streets, like another one of your fellow uh, students, Hegan, as you all know the story by now, you tell a couple of burglars. That's the sort of reward. But is that the real reward you want? That is not what you seek. What you seek is to be whole, to be integrated, to be full, to be an individual that has no fear. And not fear because somebody slurks with a gun, fear because you have a mental discipline that goes beyond what it stands here. If you can attack here an opponent, you can attack a bull as an opponent and eat it and conquer it and test it and be well in school and be well at your job. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you're doing. It doesn't matter what you're doing. What matters is how you're using it. What are you communicating to yourself? What do you want to do? And how are you facing the real enemy? It's you. Allow me to tell you that I was telling Gus the other day in a, in a few of your seafoods how when I drive an hour to one of the schools where I teach, sometimes I think of this year, and I can tell you that half of the time now, I can honestly tell you that all of it is economy. I'm an economist, so I think in that point. And I think in that perspective, it's all economy. It's gonna be economy of movement, it's gonna be economy of understanding, it's gonna be economy of purpose, it's gonna be economy of intent. And one of the things that I always taught these guys was the fact that I was always taught something that you probably have heard a thousand times. Act and react before the opponent can. Now I'm going to tell you that that comes in two ways. And again, I will learn that many years later. The opponent, such as this young adversary I'm about to face, is the external adversary. The internal adversary is you. And I'm going to ask you two questions that you should always ask. You're doing this everything from self-defense all the way to mental discipline. What are you going to really do with it? It takes a lot of courage to do these things. Do you really have the courage to put your two fingers in somebody's eyes? I don't mean to stab them. I know you practice, but could you? Could you? Your answer probably is it depends on the circumstances. Life was in danger, somebody that I loved, life was in danger, my property was in danger. And I ask you again, is that your purpose? Is that what you really want to do? So the first battle is to be listening. Could you really do this? Sometimes you hesitate to die. On the other hand, you act quickly. You will face 
consequences of a not 17th century world, the law of order. What are you going to do with this? You know, as well as I do, that in those streets, there are restrictions. In those streets, although anything goes, when you face a judge, not everything goes. What are you really doing here? Ask yourself that question. And again, it's laying the first dragon, as I call it. Not first dragon, it's your mental attitude. It's your understanding. What are you doing on there? Nothing that goes on out there matters. Do you realize that? Nothing matters. How everything is put to you outside matters not. How you're putting it in here means everything. You can blame yourself or blame others for anything you want. I cannot get here because I don't have a car. I cannot do that because I can't do this. I cannot take a class in math because I'm not good in math. Uh, you know, my mother left me, my father left me, my sister left me, my brother-in-law left me, uh, my life left me, my wife left me, everything left me. This is what this is all about. This is about the martial spirit, the soul of the warrior. And the real warrior does not go around beating on everybody else. The real warrior understands calm, intensity, engagement, control. And understand, and again, remember I'm saying it doesn't matter who or what you are. What matters is what you're doing and how you're doing it for yourself. Let's have a great hand for our